Welcome back. In the previous video, we talked about Metasploit framework structure. We explained all of the modules and what they are for, but we haven't really ran the framework itself. In this video, we're going to run it and cover some of the basic commands for it. Okay, I already mentioned in the last video that to open this framework, what we must do is open up our terminal and type msf console. Press enter. And keep in mind that it might take some time to open, especially if you're running it for the first time. And here it is, it already opened for me. And what we get right here is we get the banner of Metasploit Framework, which changes every time you start this program. And down here, we get these seven modules that we talked about. And we also get the exact number of modules that we have available to us. So here we can see 2043 exploits, 1105 auxiliary modules, 344 post-exploitation modules, over 500 payloads, and a little bit of encoders, knobs, and evasion modules. As in every other tool that we covered, to see all the available commands we can use, we can run the help command. This will open the help menu, which will give us all the available options, as well as some of the examples of how we can use Metasploit. But for now, this is not necessary, as I will show you a few of these commands that you will use every time. And by the way, before we get into those commands, what you can do inside of the Metasploit framework, you can also run the normal commands, such as ls, such as changing directories, such as, for example, running ifconfig. So if I type sudo ifconfig and type in my password, it will give me the output of ifconfig. So you can also run regular terminal commands from this. But as far as the Metasploit framework goes, let's start with listing some of the modules. For example, we can use the show command to list out any type of modules we want. So we know that there are over 500 payloads. We saw the number once we started the Metasploit. In order to list all of those 500 payloads, we can type show and then payloads. If I press enter, it will take just a few seconds and it will list out all of the available payloads that we have. Now right here this is not really that good of an output because I have my terminal a little bit more zoomed in than I should have so I will just go to the preferences and lower the font of my letters. So I will click on OK, apply, OK, clear the screen and I will type show payloads once again. It's still not that good, let me just go and lower it a little bit more. So I will just go to 13, apply, and click on OK. Clear the screen, run the command again, and here it is, we get a better output. So let's explain what we see right here. If I scroll all the way up to the beginning, we can see this is the number of the payload. It goes from 0 to over 500, and this right here is the name of the payload. So as we already know, there are bind shells and reverse shells. So we get different types of them. We can see the payloads for Android, the payloads for Apple iOS. We can see all types of payloads, command shells. We can see Java payloads, Linux payloads, if I go all the way down, OSX payloads, PHP payloads, Python, Ruby, and a bunch of others as well. Here's also Windows payloads. So we get a lot of them. Under the rank, they're all manual because they have to get executed on the target machine. And in the description, we can see for what this payload is. For example, if we check out this one, Apple Meterpreter Reverse HTTP, this is the Apple iOS Meterpreter shell or Reverse HTTP inline. So this means you would use this payload if you were, for example, attacking an Apple device. Now, we can do the same thing with exploits. If we want to list all of the 2000 exploits, we can type show exploits. And this might take a little bit longer because there is a lot more exploits than there is payloads. And here they are. Here are all 2041 exploits. You can see the output is pretty much the same as with the payloads. We get the number right here. We get the exploit name. And these exploit names are really well written. As we can see, the first part tells us for what is this exploit. Currently we are inside the Windows exploits. And if we scroll all the way up, we should see some other exploits as well. 
let's go and scroll all the way up. Well, it seems that we can only go up to here because there is a lot of them. But nonetheless, we can see for what the exploits are. For example, this one is for Windows and for browser. And here it specifies exactly what does it exploit. If I go down here and for example check out these ones, here we can see this is also Windows exploit for the FTP. So they're very well organized. And this is the structure that we saw in the previous video. Just this is how the Metasploit framework outputs it for us. These exploits that belong to Windows FTP are all located inside of the FTP directory of the Windows exploits directory. If I go all the way down, and what we can do right here is we can choose one of these exploits just to see how we can select them and run them. Of course, we are not going to be attacking any target. We just want to see how we can select one of these exploits. So let's go with this one. For example, Windows SMB MS06 040 Net API. And by the way, to check out more information about exploits, we can go on to the right. So this exploit came out in 2006. And in the right column right here, it tells us what exactly does this exploit do. So for this particular one, we get that it is an exploit for Microsoft Server Service and it overflows this function. Now, the good part about this is that you don't really need to know how these work in order to be able to run them. Let me show you. If you copy this exploit name right here, so copy Windows SMB MS06040 Net API, in order to select it, let us clear the screen, we can type the command use. And you type use and then the module name that you want to use. In our case, we want to use an exploit. And after it, all we have to do is paste the exploit name. So use exploit slash windows slash SMB slash and then the name of the exploit. Press enter. And we will see that this exploit configured payload Windows Meterpreter reverse TCP. And we will talk about this in just a second. For now, we can see that it is currently using the module that we selected because it is printed out in red right here and it also tells us that it is an exploit. So let's check out all the information that we can get for this exploit. The first thing that I always like to do is type the command show info. And this show info command tells us more about this particular exploit. So if we go down here to the description, it will tell us this module exploits a stack buffer overflow. So this is a buffer overflow exploit in the net API 32 canonicalize path name function using this RPC. And you can read about any exploit that you select. Another information that we get right here are some of the references. So you can visit these links right here to read more about this particular exploit. Besides this, another command that we can do is show options. And this is the important part. Let me just clear the screen and type it once again, just so we can see only the options part. Here is where you select your options for the exploit. First thing we see is module options, and it asks us for three different things. And keep in mind, different exploits will want different things. Usually they will all have these R hosts and R port, which is just the remote host and the remote port, or in our case, the target's IP address and the target's port that we're attacking. So we can see two of these are already automatically set. The R port is already set to be 445 and the SMB pipe is already set to be the browser. All we are left to specify right here is the R hosts or the IP address of the target machine. So if we were attacking a Windows server that was vulnerable to this attack, we would specify here the IP address of that Windows server machine. And in this column right here, you will notice that some of these things will be required and some of these things will not be required. In our case, in this particular exploit, all of these three things are required to specify in order for exploit to work. In the description, it tells us exactly what it wants from us. So the R hosts is the target host or the target's IP address. The R port is the SMB service port on the target machine. 
and the SMB pipe is the pipe name to use. So these are the exploit options. And down here we get payload options. Now what does this mean? Well, remember, after exploiting the target, we drop a payload. So by default, remember once we ran the command to use this exploit, it gave us Windows Meterpreter reverse TCP by default. This means that we're using a payload for Windows. It is a Meterpreter shell, which remembers it is the best shell that we can get. And it is a reverse shell over TCP connection. You can change this if you want to. And down here we get the options that we need to set for payload. Remember, once using reverse shell, we must listen on our Cal Linux machine for the incoming connection. And that's the information that it asks us right here. The L host is our own IP address, the IP address of Cal Linux machine. Or as it says right here, the listening address. We specify our IP address right here, so you just need to type sudo ifconfig. And we can see 192.168.1.9. Usually the Metasploit framework will set it by default. So let me just clear the screen, run show options once again. And the L port is the listening port, or Cal Linux port that we want to listen for the incoming connections. And it is usually set by default to be 4444. And all of these options you can change. For example, if you notice that Metasploit Framework set the incorrect IP address for a Cal Linux machine, you can type set and then the parameter name, in our case lhost, to be a different IP address. For example, 192.168.1.15. And it will set the lhost parameter to be a different IP address, as we can see right here. Inside of these R hosts, as we can see this is also required, we would set the IP address of our target machine. So let's say we had a Windows server and its IP address was 192.168.1.20. We would type it right here, so 192.168.1.20. And if I type show options once again, now we got this set as well. Now, payload is something that you can change. Usually you want to leave it what Metasploit Framework already gave you, because the default one is usually the best one. But sometimes some of the payloads will not work and others will work. So in order to see all of the available payloads that you can use for this particular exploit, you can type show payloads once again. Just this time it will not list out all the 500 possible payloads, it will only list out the possible payloads for this particular exploit. And this will be all the Windows payloads. Since we are attacking a Windows machine with this exploit, the Windows payloads will be something that we can use. So we can see some bind shells, reverse shells, we can see some of the interpreter shells. So for example, let us say that you don't want to use a reverse shell, you want to use a bind shell. How would you change the payload? Well, you would copy the bind shell, let's say we want to use the interpreter bind shell, so copy its name, and go all the way down and type set payload, and then paste the payload name. So paste selection, press enter, and it will tell us the payload has been changed. If I clear the screen, show options, we will see different payload. We no longer have the meterpreter reverse TCP, we now have the bind TCP meterpreter. And it will also ask us for different information about the payload. We no longer get the L host, since remember with bind TCP, it is not our Cal Linux machine that is listening for the connection, it is the target machine that is listening for the connection, and we are the ones that connect to it. So in this case, it is asking us for our host, or the remote host, or as the description says, the target IP address. So we would select right here the same IP address that we select right here, because it is the target that has to open the port, and the local port will be the local port on the target machine that will open for us to connect to. And you would select here whatever you want. So what is important to get out all of this is that we can change different options using set command. So you just type set and then for example we want to change the L port, we type L port and then make it whatever we want. And if we type show options, it will be changed right here. And the last part that we see down here are the targets. And these 
targets right here are all of the vulnerable targets for this particular exploit. To list all of them out, we can type show and then targets. This will give us a list of all the targets that we can exploit using this attack. So we get Windows NT, Windows XP, and now different versions of Windows XP, and Windows 2003. So this is an older exploit that attacks Windows XP machines. Now you can either, if you know exactly which version of Windows is the target running, you can select it right here by specifying set target and then the number, for example, let's say the target is using Windows XP SP1 English, you could type it like this, so set target 3, because the ID for that particular version is 3. Or if you didn't know exactly which version, you would just leave it on automatic, which means that Metasploit framework will figure it out on its own, so we don't need to specify it. The only important thing is that it is one of these versions. If it is, for example, a Windows 7 machine, this exploit will not work. And once you set all of these options, the last thing you need to do is type exploit. In our case, this will not work because we don't really have a vulnerable Windows XP machine, so it will give us an exploit failed error. In this case, it is unreachable because this IP address right here on my local network is not even online. That's why this will not work. And this is pretty much it. Now, there are other commands as well that could be useful, but these are the main ones that we always use to choose exploits and payloads and to set their options. Finally, the time has come. In the next video, we are going to apply what we learned for now to perform our first exploit on the Metasploitable machine. See you in the next video.